for today's episode of Great People Are Doing Great Things, I caught up with someone who really needs no introduction. She's a leader in sustainability, a TEDx talker, and her work has been covered off by the likes of Triple J, The Australian, and SBS. I hope you guys enjoy watching this as much as we had filming it. Hi guys, it's Tom from Make Your Mark here, and really looking forward to our fourth instalment of Great People Doing Great Things. Um, and I'm tuning in from Gurungai country on the Northern Beaches. So I just want to pay my respects to the, the elders past, um, present and emerging. Um, now, now we've got Sarah here and I know you ventured up to the Northern Rivers. Can you let everyone know where you're tuning in from? Hello everybody. Thank you for having me, Tom. I am joining you from Nangabal country and the, the broader Banjala nation. And I've got the Arakal country, country just over to the north. And I'm so grateful to be here. Was there a particular moment where the, the light bulb went off where you went, I want to make a positive change um, on the planet and, and the environment? I was about 21 and I had, was just coming out of studying biomedicine where I really wanted to like help people um, and, you know, work on potentially like vaccines and, and things like that. And then I, I kind of had this realization where if the land isn't healthy, then we can never be healthy. So how can I work with the land to ensure its health? Um, I know you, you're, con you're always doing constant things on the go, but can you just let um, the viewers know what you're, what you're currently working on? Yeah, I'm cooking up a few little cheeky bits at the moment. Um, I'm doing a lot of work with my Vote for the Planet team with a company called Reunion Earth. And so we've been running online leadership programs and, and actually some real life events working with traditional custodians to teach people actually how to forage connection to, to land and, and stories of place. And I'm also working with the Red Cross at the moment. So with their innovation team, we're training up and empowering these local leaders so that when more things do start to happen, they're ready. Has there been any kind of project or, or work you've done where you've sat back and just gone like, wow? Yeah, that for me would have to be the, the Vote for the Planet campaign, which we ran during the 2019 federal election. And we realised that it, it wasn't going to be a climate election. And so I was like, hey, cool, what are we going to do about it? And we all kind of huddled into this room and, and brewed up this, this campaign in a couple of hours. And and then launched it. And then, you know, within three weeks, we had half a million people jumping onto our website and downloading. The thing that got me really, really excited is it was the first time I saw like everyday Australians getting really involved in politics. What's your secret? Like, how do you <laughs> keep the fire in your belly um, and keep marching forward despite all the, the kind of terrible things that happen in the world? I do get quite angry and frustrated. And I feel, I, I literally feel that like emotion come up as anger and I'm like, I don't want to feel angry. And how do I transform this anger and frustration into action? Using those, those feelings and those emotions and then just doing something with it and not letting it sort of stagnate inside your body. At the moment, do you think we're on the preface of change or do you think we're kind of stuck um, in this cycle, this endless cycle of waste, um, pollution, and not being heard by the big corporations and government? If you go back, back to like a year ago, you know, we. COVID, you could never imagine that we'd be sitting here um, with COVID, the bushfires, even the school strikes. And so, so much has happened. We're like literally in the eye of the storm of all of that. And so I definitely believe that we are right at the precipice of this huge amount of change. And I'm really actually excited to see how we use all that energy and all that emotion and transform it into the world that we actually want to live in. What do you think will be the next standout moment um, to change the next set of uninspired people around Australia? I'm curious as to whether or not we're like, we are in that right now. So, you know, taking COVID as a context and, you know, everything stopped and all of these stories of, oh, I'm too busy for this and this is too important. People have slowed down and they've started to question, well, what is important? Is, is this like actually cooking my own food and spending time with my family more important than this busy, 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 busy and just climbing these like, you know, these corporate, corporate ladders and acquiring more stuff. I'm actually, I'm a huge fan of your Custodians podcast. I actually had a listen Aww. last week. Um, for the viewers and everyone listening, um, how did that come about? And um, for people who aren't aware, what can they learn from that, that series of podcasts? 
I just wanted to make something that everyone could access to tell these stories with traditional custodians and people that were custodians of the planet as well. And so I was in Tassie and it just kind of came through me. I was like, I'm going to make a podcast. (laughs) I don't know how to do it. I'm going to make a podcast. I'm going to capture these stories with traditional custodians and um, people that are, that are just believing that they're part of this, the custodial species on this planet. And so, yeah, that's where it was born. Are there any kind of exciting innovations or initiatives that you're, you're looking forward to seeing next year? I'm really excited about the regeneration movement. How do we be regenerative beings, net positive beings? And so looking at, you know, how we actually remember that we are nature and contribute to creating these living systems and sequestering heaps of carbon and protecting wild places and rewilding and things like permaculture seaweed down in Tassie. And then the wild card is actually healing and trauma. How do we collectively heal and feel that lightness again and bring in more playfulness? What would be your best advice um, for if people wanted to make a positive impact, but just through you know, small changes? Firstly, move the money. <laughs> Change who you bank with, where your super is, what you're spending your money on. Find that thing that sets your belly on fire or gives you goosebumps and just go and do that because there is so much work to be done and we need it to be so diverse. We need people to be cleaning the oceans. We need people to be starting petitions and changing policy. We need people to be doing rewilding projects and planting heaps of trees. Sarah, honestly, thank you so much for tuning in, tuning in all the way out there. It's been an absolute um, pleasure. And I cannot wait. Oh, um, thank you so yeah, much, Tom. You're such yeah, a legend. It's you. been it's beautiful. Been, it's been awesome chatting to you, as always. You're a legend, Tom. Thank you so much for having me. And super excited to, to see when, when you launch and for people to be able to move their money into positive projects. It's going to be really, really cool. Bring on 2021. If you know someone or a business around Australia doing great things, Tag them in the comments below and they could be on the next episode of Great People Doing Great Things.